Welcome to an artist life. I live by the sea in New England, and I love to share my quiet, simple life of art and garden and home. So I hope you will feel that you can come and join me. Welcome to an artist life. Good day, everyone. Una and I are just enjoying the daffs, which are blooming. Right, Una? And uh, just enjoying how lovely spring is. It's nice to finally have these start to blossom. I wish I could grow tulips, but the deer and the rabbit eat them. But the daffs and the alliums are fine. Right, Una? Let's get started with this week's vlog. Come on, Una. Good day again, everyone. Welcome to this week's vlog. Una and I just want to welcome you to uh, this week's, which is the week of Sunday. And in fact, I normally do my vlogs as a premiere on Sunday, which is the day you're watching this. However, this Sunday we're lucky enough to be able to go to my mother-in-law's, so it isn't a premiere, but I'm happy to have a day off of online things to enjoy uh, some time with my mother-in-law and our family, because who knows how, how often or how long that will last for now. But uh, this week uh, we have some surprises in the incubator and uh, a little one little sorrow in the incubator, but such is the life of keeping animals. And yes, I'm not sure what else we'll get up to. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so let's just see what we can get up to. So I'm also considering this week maybe trying out a few different things with the vlog. We'll see. I hate to say I'm changing and then not change. However, the one constant in life they say is change. <laughs> That's always true. That's uh, one of the uh, favorite things I love to live by. That and uh, if you want to make God laugh, make a plan. Both of those are should be uh, those are ingrained on my mind. <laughs> but yes, it's going to be a quiet spring-like week. Maybe we won't have such drastic changes in weather this week. Right, Una? And uh, spring definitely feels like it's sprung. And uh, I also think I need to probably change my intro soon to a spring-like intro because I'm considering doing um, an intro for each season. And as you probably saw, the intro that just happened is obviously quite heavily winter. So uh, we'll figure out what we'll do for spring. Maybe Una will be involved. So uh, yeah, let's get started with this week. I'm not sure what we'll get up to. But let's get started and happy Easter. On we go. Although we may not have had extremes of weather this week, we have had extremes of tide. With the full moon, this isn't even quite high tide. And here you can see the same view at low tide where we have the flats. So the tide has been quite high and lovely this week with some nice little white caps. So I think it would be a good day to go down into the flats and do a bit of mudlarking. And there is Algernon Siegel. All right, let's head out into the flats. And you can see, thanks to the full moon, that now the low tide is at an extreme. Now we don't get the flats like this all the time, but because we've had the right a conjunction of tides, wind, and the cycle of the moon, I could go out and stroll across. And you could see you could almost walk all the way across, but the little sliver in between is where you still see water is where it's dredged so that there's always a way to come in and out with boats. But right now it'd be easy to go out and go mudlarking and find some wonderful treasures and look how exposed 
Algernon Siegel's Flat Rock is. Do you still proudly sitting atop it? Of course, it seems more like a fortress or a keep now. And I always think the spitting rock looks smaller when it's completely exposed like that without any water touching it. But as I showed in a previous video, geez, I think last year, if I were to go down and stand next to it, you would see it's at least twice as tall as I am, that rock. And of course, this big rock, which some say looks like a tortoise pulled into its shell, is very exposed. And look, all of our railroad tracks that lead to our boathouse are completely exposed. And if we were to go down to the dock now, you would see, except for the very end pilings, which of course sit in the channel, so they're always in water. But look how low the oyster fisherman's boat is setting in the water. And at the very edge of it, it's just to come aground on the sand. So yes, just the extremes of the tides here. I think I might go out and have a little dig for treasure. There's just something so magical about walking the flats. I've done it countless, countless times. But to just know your feet are treading upon the seabed that is normally teeming with shoals of fish and the kelp and seaweed isn't lying prostrate, but instead flowing like liquid forests. And the ripples and patterns that the receding tide makes. It's just so magical. And even seeing the left behind remnants of bivalves from Algernon Siegel and all his chums having their breakfasts and lunch day in and day out here. And of course, the big giant boulders, like the spitting rock exposed like a giant monster and the wind whistling through where the water spits, and the barnacles graying and drying in the sun, and Algernon's flat rock, and the sun, and the sand. And to think in but a few hours, this will be a wash with salty sea again, and the fish will swim back in, and the mollusks open back up, and the crabs scuttle, and come back out and look how big and tall is this rock and how small I am by the sea, my lovely sea. And I don't always find lovely treasures when I'm mudlarking on our flats, but sometimes I do and this is one of my one of my favorite finds, which I've used here on, as I shared the previous week, setting up the little tea trolley we got at the antique shop with my in the plant room. 
this beautiful uh, cobalt bottle which is covered in bar barnacles. Let's move over to a little bit better light. Here you can see it with some other treasures. Uh, these actually weren't garnered from mudlarking. In fact, I get these little casings, crabs. They These crabs shed their little casings all the time. And uh, this one was actually the perfect pink I wanted at one point that I was going to take in to have it scanned for a pink for a paint, but it's faded since then, so I'll, I'll find another one this summer. And this is the the uh, local tortoise shell I found on the beach. I think I shared that in a vlog, oh heavens, months ago. But see how lovely this cobalt glass is with all the barnacles on? Sometimes when I'm out on the flats, I find some lovely treasures. Other times it's just more shells, or really I the treasure sometimes is just garnering the uh, joy of walking in the low water, big, digging some clams if I feel like it. But of course now that I vlog, some of the treasure is the footage I have, so. The joy of mudlarking, but it's calm seas today, and nary any wind. And I was just setting up to sit here and have some tea and start some sketching and share art with you, when I couldn't help but notice these two gulls on the rocks. Now, I've looked at endless shorebirds, day in and day out, but they always amuse. And for some reason, as the tide was coming in, just seeing these two bit of rock exposed, and each of these two gulls just choosing one right next to one another to just enjoy the afternoon, just made me smile. So I thought I would share it with you. I do need to get a better lens so I could get a better zoom in. But see how they're just happily relaxing as the wind blows softly and the tide moves back in. And they'll lose their spot probably in 15, 20 minutes. The tide will just come on top of those two rocks and they'll be off to their next adventure, just as you and I are off to our next adventure. So let's talk about artwork, starting with the fact that I finished the other week's painting, Lady with a Bug. And here we have my finished digital oil painting of my latest Lady with a Pet. And this one is entitled Lady with a Pug. And obviously you can see she's happily embracing her darling pug. I've had a few pugs in my life. I've never owned one, but I've had friends and relatives who've had them. And they are jolly little fellows. And uh, you'll also recall, uh, I shared it a few weeks ago. Here's the sketch I did for this painting, which I had done in uh, pastel and chalk. I probably will make that available at some point as well. Uh, but I'll point out now that this, uh, in its oil version, is, uh, I think I have put it on um, as some prints and bags and things like that on my website. Uh, if you go to DonnaDavisArt.com. Now, and if you'll notice in the background, I have uh, the view happening because I thought if anyone was bored listening to me talking about my artwork, at least they could enjoy the view and watch. Uh, I think there's a large ship out at sea passing by. Now, uh, the other thing I thought I wanted to do and start doing, which I'm starting this week, is some friends had uh, mentioned to me that I should start an Etsy shop to offer digital downloads. So I'm going to be doing that. So I have just set up an Etsy shop and it has one image in it. And that image is this here, which I shared with you last week, which is the sketch, hedgehog in a Wedgwood teacup. Now, I wanted to share this and what I'd like to do is when I do certain things like this uh, hedgehog, is I kind of want to share it as for the f maybe two days as a free download. So unfortunately, Etsy won't let you offer a free download because I have to pay 20 cents per image I upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have p make a post on my website, which is Donna Davis Art, which you see on the screen, and I'm going to put that in the link down below. So if you go down below in the description of this video, you'll find the link to my Patreon page. And below that, you will find the link to my website, DonnaDavisArt.com. And the very first post will have a high resolution version of this image, the a hedgehog in a Wedgwood teacup. Now I'm going to keep it on that post for two days. And the day I'm posting this is Easter Sunday. So for two days that will be up and you can go to my website and download a high resolution of that for free. 
then after two days I'll take that down from there and it will then be available on my Etsy site and I'll probably sell down digital downloads on there maybe three to five dollars I haven't decided yet um, and I hope in the future to make more sketches that I can share with you and then offer them first for free for a couple of days and then put them on my Etsy site for a few dollars for downloads what's great about digital downloads is you can use them either as a print it's a high resolution so you could have it printed as a pretty large poster or as a print to put in a frame but you can also print them down and use them in things like Cricut machines or silhouettes and cut them out and make stickers or you can cut them out and glue them together and put them on little popsicle sticks things like that or you can print it out on heavy cardstock or on a heavy bond cold press watercolor paper is a great way to make a, a greeting card or that type of thing so I'm kind of like excited about doing some little simple artwork to share on my Etsy site that I can do fun graphic designs with to share with all of you and again hoping first to offer it for free for a couple of days for a download and then putting it into the Etsy site after that. I just think it's kind of a fun new thing to try as this is called an artist's life I think I should keep growing my sort of artist's aspect of it. Well uh, I'll put back up on the screen here Lady with a Pug in her lovely finished oil version. All right let's continue on with this week's video. And here we have our first, well actually it was our second little hatch, the sweet little first leg bar, isn't she darling? They're so sweet when they first come out of the egg and when they see you they just look so happily to you. But sadly her little compatriot there sleeping next to her was the one silky that hatched but sadly we lost her. She just passed in the night in the incubator as the others were drying. But that is sort of what happens sometimes. It, it usually means there was probably something wrong with the chick. So I felt so sad as she laid quietly next to the chick as it was dying. But here she is, dried out the next day, happy to be new in the world. At this point, the only living chick I had from my hatch. And she is a cream leg bar. And by her color, I know she's a hen. So she went back into the incubator and then her sweet little compatriot was born. <laughs> now this should not be a black chick. The chick is either meant to be a chipmunk colored as she is as a hen or as a rooster a light color. So we're assuming it's a rooster but see how sweet she had her little feather over the wing. She was so happy to have this other chick born so she kept walking up and sort of helping the little fellow out of his egg. So I'm kind of excited to think these two may be husband and wife. <laughs> we shall see but she was so happy to have her little friend after the other one had passed. And here he is still wet and struggling and trying to get out with a shell hooked to his bum. And she's so happily giving him a little chick hug. But then the joy of joys was the next day a silky was born after all. And we end up having a surprise silky, the one silky to be hatched. And here we have our successes from the incubator. The little chipmunk and the black are from my cream leg bars. This little darling is the one porcelain du clay I hatched whilst I was able to get more at the garden center, which was a surprise. And of course, the most miraculous of all, our little peach colored silky. So thus are the successes of the incubator, making up for the sorrow. And I have another batch of cream leg bars on its way in the post. So let's hope we'll get something from there. And isn't it lovely to have Easter chicks? So here's our sweet little darling, our determined little Silky. Isn't she adorable? So in the end, despite our loss of our other Silky chick, we were surprised <laughs> with this surprise Silky chick, which is rather in the keeping of the Easter message, rebirth, and spring and newness. So thank you for joining me for this week's vlog. And uh, I do hope you go and check out my website for the free download of our hedgehog. And uh, as I said, that will be coming uh, an Etsy site as well. And I hope all of you have a happy Easter and are excited for spring. And uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon page, I would love to see you in the virtual village. If not, I'm happy to have you here on YouTube. And remember, stay creative. Cheers.